To use Illustrator and After Effects together, there's just uh, one important aspect that you need to be particularly mindful of, and that's your layer management. With After Effects, all that After Effects will pick up uh, when you bring in a layered composition, or layered file rather from Illustrator, is the actual um, layer itself. Now in After Effects you can have multiple sub-layers within that layer and each one will contain an individual vector shape. Now if you intended to animate any of these objects independently of each other then you would have to make sure that they are all on their own layer. So if for example you wanted to have this circle moving independently of another circle you would have to create another layer and then draw the second circle. So now you've got two separate layers, After Effects will pick up these two layers uh, separately, but if you had them all as sub-layers within a single layer, then you wouldn't be able to move them. Okay, so that's the first thing. Now this is just a real kind of... Um, let's delete that layer first of all, and delete that. Now the intention of this is just to give you a very simple overview of how to create some simple Simple graphics. I'll just give you an idea of what I'm talking about here in After Effects. I'll just find a file here called Simple Human. Okay, so you can see this this file here is just uh, it just contains your your kind of generic little human figure that you can use then for you know showing some kind of statistic or simple um, generic human type character for your your animation. Um, okay. That's just a combination of simple shapes. And you see you have a number of simple shapes here available to you. And another Illustrator tool called the Pathfinder, which is extremely powerful. And if you're ever going to be using Illustrator for anything, it's something that you're going to want to make it your first port of call. Um, OK, so what I'm going to do is just quickly go through some of the shapes here. Rectangle doesn't need any explanation and give you a rectangle or a square if you want to create a square hold down shift if you want to create a rectangle just don't hold down anything and create a rectangle either tall or wide the next one down is the rounded rectangle tool the rounded rectangle tool is used by uh, tapping the up and oops no the tool there okay one more go rounded rectangle tool so you use the up and down arrows to make it more or less rounded. So you can see you now I'm tapping the down arrow here as I draw, and it's making it more kind of more of a corner than a smooth rounded edge. And now I'm tapping the up arrow, and you'll see that it's making it much larger. Larger. If I hold it down, it'll speed it up even more. So you can make very rounded or only slightly rounded, depending on whether you tap that up or down arrow. And the next one is the ellipse tool again ellipse tool is like rectangle just hold it down and move around and you'll get an ellipse hold down shift and you'll get a circle now at, at any point if you want to move this as you're drawing it hold down the space bar as well so this is shift and space bar i'm drawing i'm moving a circle and then i can reposition it and continue to draw it and this goes for all of the shape tools so if at any point you're drawing something and you want to move it to a different part of the screen hold down shift Sorry, the space bar key. Hold down the space bar key and you can move it around and then let go. Okay, I'll do that and go into the next one. The polygon tool is a bit like the, the rounded rectangle tool. Just hit the up key to get more sides, down to get less sides until you get a triangle, which is the fewest amount of sides you can have on any shape. Again, up to get more, down to get less. Oops, delete that and under that you have star tool star tool again up and down arrows will give you less or more points in this case and last one I'm not even going to go near it's a very kind of complex looking shape tool with bevels and all kinds of bevels, but uh, gradients and all kinds of stuff going on it's going to leave that alone Right, so those are your simple shapes, and you will find yourself using probably the rectangle, the rounded, and the ellipse tool most of the time, and occasionally the polygon and the star tool, depending on what you need. Um, 
Alright, now the next thing is the, the Pathfinder. The Pathfinder has two rows of buttons here. It has um, Shape Modes and Pathfinders. And Shape Modes give you ways of combining um, two shapes together to give you a third shape. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a very simple sense. I just have two rectangles, one overlapping the other. One is on top of the other. You can see it here in the, the layers. If I use the first one here, it's called Unite. And oh, first of all, you need to get the selection tool and make sure everything is selected. So you have that. everything you want to be used in a Pathfinder uh, action to be selected together. So get your black arrow to make sure that all the points and all the paths are, are being selected when you lasso them. Use Unite to create a single united shape. Use minus front to use the, the topmost layer to cut into the one behind it. And that's like a what used to be called subtract in the older version of Illustrator. Okay, so that just takes a chunk out of the, the layer below it. The one here is intersect. Okay, so click that and it will just give you where the two shapes intersected with each other and then it does kind of the, the reverse of that then with exclude and it will actually give you two shapes. where there was one and you can see that it just cut the center part out where they overlapped. So that's the, the shape modes. Now with the pathfinders you need a little bit more going on so I'm going to uh, just undo that back a few points. So I've got my two shapes and I'll just get a, a rounded rectangle and drag it across there and maybe a an ellipse tool and just kind of pull that out over there. Now I've got a lot of shapes there so if I select all those and first of all use the first one which is divide what it does is it for every for every overlapping point it's going to create a new shape so it's going to turn this into a bit of a jigsaw puzzle when i click that button and now if i get my direct selection tool which allows me to get in and get individual parts you'll see that that's created a number of little pieces there where things overlapped so now i've got individual shapes where i just had overlapping sections I'll undo that to the point before I did my action. Oops, too far. And the second one. The second one is the trim. Uh, just quickly select everything again. And what this one does is it looks kind of from a top down point of view and it leaves the top shape intact but trims everything that the top shape overlaps with. And then the second one down will trim everything directly below that and so on and so forth all the way down. So the trim will do that. Oops. But what this one actually does as well is it knocks out any uh, styling that you have on it. So I'm just going to uh, maybe give it a fill color just so you can see the, the result. Okay. So this doesn't allow for um, strokes, but you'll see that when I. Okay, went too far there maybe. Um, try that again. one more time, this time I'm going to remember to color it this time when I do my trim. Okay. Now, so that's the first one. I think that one was directly below that. So you can see that what it's done is it's, it's, it's working from the top down. The top one cuts into the second one, second one cuts into the third one, and then the result of all of these kind of cut into the last one here. So I get four separate shapes. Now, just go back one more step to show you the next one here. So again, I select everything, and the next one is Merge. Merge just basically gives you the equivalent of Unite, except with multiple shapes. Again, it knocks out any styling, so you need to go back and color that again, if that's what you need to do. And um, that was Merge. This one is Crop, and uh, Crop works by basically looking at the top layer and everything that was visible within that or everything that, that intersects with when I crop 
is maintained and becomes you know its own shape. And the last one then is minus back, which is a little bit like minus front, except it works from a bottom up, in a bottom up kind of a way. So just do a minus back. You can see that everything that's behind the top layer, the circle in this case, are made into one outline, and that outline is then used to cut into the top layer. So that's minus back. So this is front. We'll just color it a different color. Everything else is back. So if we make that invisible, you'll see that it makes a shape like this. This is all going to cut into the front. Like that. Now I think I skipped one there, so let's go back. Um, that is outline. Hmm. Can't really remember what this one does, but uh, ah yeah, I think this one, what this one does is it doesn't create shapes, but it does maintain the, the vector outline. So for instance, this one here can be pulled out like that. Um, let's see. Okay, I'm gonna skip that one. It's, um, so you can kind of see what it's doing here. It doesn't create a solid shape so much as leave the overhanging vector line or the path and breaks them up into individual segments rather than giving you complete shapes. Now you won't really be using that one so much um, for this simple kind of graphic use that I'm demonstrating here. Now, um, okay, so let's get into making that simple man shape uh, just to show you how easy it is with the, the shapes and the pathfinder. So I'm going to create this first layer, I'm going to call it head, and I'm going to use my um, my oval tool, or my ellipse tool rather, and I'm going to hold down shift, and actually I'm going to hold down the space bar now, move them over into the center, and make that a bit bigger. Okay, so that is the, the head. Now at this point, I can make his body, and that's pretty simple using the rounded rectangle tool. So I'm going to make it wide enough and round enough that it looks like a pair of shoulders. It's going to need to be pretty wide. Okay, and then I'll hold down space bar to bring it back in. And let me just move that slightly. So if I select that, should be able to use my smart guides. There we go. So you can see the smart guides are aligning the center of that now with the center of the head. I think for smart guides, you need to go up to view. And um, guide smart guides. There you go. So it's at command U to turn on smart guides. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, cut off the bottom of this shape here. Actually, I won't. What I'll do is I'll create the the space in between his arms and his body now, just by using the same tool. And I'm going to just create a very narrow kind of pipe shape there. And I'm going to get my selection tool and I'm going to move it into where his armpit would be and I'm going to line it up with the outside of his head so that's how I'm going to do it. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and move at the same time by holding down alt I'll see two little arrows and I'll drag that across hopefully I'll get to see the same smart guide there it is and I'll let go and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create another duplicate I'm just going to drag it off here to the right because I'm going to use it again in a minute. Now what I have now is I've got three shapes. I've got his body, I've got the left armpit, if you want, the right armpit, my left, my right, not his. And what I need to do first of all is to create a compound shape between this one and this one. So I'll hold down Shift to select the two. I'll go back to my Unite to create a single compound shape. So now both are selected. So when I select the whole lot here and I go minus front, it's going to use the the two armpit shapes which are now one single compound shape and it's going to minus them from the body. Okay so now you can see it's starting to, to come together. Next step I'm going to do is to elongate the body section until it comes down to where his legs will be. So to do that I'm going to use my direct selection tool. Now this is a little bit different um, 
So what I'm doing now is hovering over this corner until I see a little point. Select that. You can see they all become highlighted now, but you see that this one is dark, which means it's active. If I hold down Shift, I can select this one too. And now if I hit my down key, you'll see that it moves those two points down. If I hold down Shift, it'll move them faster until I've got them kind of down to roughly where his legs should be. And now this is where I'm going to bring in my third version of my long shape here. Now I'm going to just drag that in there until it's centered. Bring it down a little bit further. And again, I'm just going to select through these. Now, I get, this is what my black arrow, my selection tool, not my direct selection tool. So it selects the whole lot. Bottom shape being the body, top shape being, the again, the gap. And all I have to do is minus front again. So now I've got a graphic of a head and a body. Now, what I've actually done inadvertently is I've put the body and the head into the head layer. So this might be a good way of showing you how to get around that. I need two different layers, one for the head and one for the body, because I might want to, let's say I want to animate the head so that the head kind of moves in from the left onto his shoulders or pops up or scales up from its center or something like that. Now I could leave the head and the body here if I wanted them always to stay intact uh, in After Effects, that's fine. Now um, to create a new layer, just go down here, new layer, drag the, the body in there and then double click that to call it body. Uh, click OK. And then it's pretty much good to go. Now, what I can, actually no, that's all I need to do now. I can save that and just onto the desktop, uh, call it um, simple man two, click save, click OK, go into After Effects, uh, desktop, Simple man two. Click open. Composition. Um, layer size. Click OK. And you can see now that I have a couple of graphics here. Hard to see. Now I should have filled them with white before I came out, so I'm going to delete them now. Go back into Illustrator. Select everything. Um, make sure it has a fill color of white. And get rid of the stroke. Save, After Effects, Simple Man 2 is what I'm looking for, Air Size, yes, and now when I bring that in, I've got a body and I've got a head, okay, um, that is pretty much it, right. I'm going to shut this down now. <laughs> There it is.